This is the plaintiff, Mickey Visco. He says he brought his car to the defendant's shop for repair, and the guy gave him a price and then kept upping it. He got fed up with this man's antics, so he brought it to another mechanic because the repairs the defendant made weren't done right. The defendant's a dishonest man who overcharges his customers. He doesn't fix things properly, and he's here in the name of justice, seeking the return of his hard-earned and wasted $2,500. This is the defendant, Chris Anderson. He says he's been in business for 30 years, and you don't stay in business that long if you're bad at what you do. The car's 13 years old with 113,000 miles on it, and he fixed what he was hired to fix. If the plaintiff has additional problems with this old car, it's not his fault, and he knows he's in the right and owes nothing. He's accused of not fixing up the fixer-upper. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff brought his car to the defendant's repair shop, says no, the guy screwed him over. But the defendant says, the car is 13 years old with 113,000 miles, so give me a break. It's the case of, you Let messed up my junk. Me. Thank you, Douglas. Mickey ahead. Visco, yes. you are suing Chris Anderson. Uh, you don't want us to mention your company name, so you're suing his um, auto service place for $2,500 for additional work that is needed that wasn't done by the defendant. Okay, tell me what happened. Well, good afternoon, Your Honor. Okay. The reason why we are here today is I went to go buy a used car for my daughter. We looked and found a car on Craigslist in the Farmingdale area. And then you go, then you buy it. But before you buy it, you have the defendant take a look at it? Yes, I did. Before buying it? Before buying it, yes. Right. And what is your business? I'm in the uh, automotive repair and service uh, Okay, and business. how did you find him to have him take a look at it? I looked across the street and I saw the... Got it. Uh, so you went over there and so they put it on a lift and they look at it and they tell you what? Uh, his son tells me this car is worth approximately $3,000 and it's going to need some work. I was with my friend uh, and he told me it's going to need a valve gasket cover and all these other different things. I said, listen, I also want the air conditioning done. When What's they done mean? Was it uh, broken? Well, it wasn't working. It, it wasn't blowing out great. And wasn't I wanted to, see it to be recharged or a new compressor or whatever. So after uh, they test drove the car, they looked it over, they gave me a, a report, they charged me uh, $60 approximately. Right. And the report, and in the, do you have the report that they gave you originally? Yes, I do. All right. Where they tell you this is what it appears to us is wrong. Correct. Okay. They gave me a, a and vague then, So statement. you bought the car, and what did you pay for the car? I paid sixteen hundred dollars for it. Sixteen hundred, good deal, because it was worth three thousand according to them, even right. in its state. And I have the uh, car. Okay, so you buy the car well. and then you take it to them and say, "Okay, go ahead, do the repairs." That is correct. And what happens? Well, I asked. I said, "Listen, how much is it going to approximately cost?" And they said, "Approximately a thousand dollars." So I said, "All right, great. That's why I made the original deal with the the uh, past owner. We make an appointment to do Wednesday, September fourteenth, to get this work done." So I get called on Tuesday, the next day. They're saying, hey, listen, this car is going to be over $1,600. I said, well, we agreed approximately 1000 Oh, we'll take care of it, we'll take care of it. I said, listen, if you guys are doing this work as well, I would also like a New York State inspection sticker because Wait, I'm Wait, I'm not following you. They call you and tell you that the same work that they priced at 1000 was going to be 1600 or they call you and tell you there's additional work you should do and therefore the bill will be higher? No, they, tell, they quote me now 1600 for Except. what work? What was the show me your quote for a thousand? Uh, he the bill. Right, that's the original thing that they tell you. Right, and then the hold on, hold on. Then, this is just all you handed my bailiff was the sixty dollar. Um, right, but there's a quote on. It's not a quote on top. It worked that they said. Hold on, where does it say a thousand dollars? There is no thousand dollars statement. Oh, okay. This so then you're not wait. So then you're not handing me something that says that they originally told you a thousand dollars, are you? No. Oh, okay. All right. So now, because that's what you said you were handing me, and that's what I asked for. Your testimony is they told you, oh, uh, this work. They then quote you the next day, this will be $1,600. Do you agree to that? Eventually, yes. And then what happens? I come back. I wait there a few hours. Then I have to leave to pick up my son. Yeah. So I'm 30 miles away. They put everything back together. I go 200 yards, and as soon as I depress the brake, it starts shuddering and pulling to the left. So... I go back and forth. I can't take the car. 
I come Wait, back. Let's go back and forth. Well, I go back to where I live. Change Wait cars. a minute. If it's 200 yards away, why aren't you turning around in this unsafe car? Why are you picking up your kids? Because I had to get home. I had nobody to pick I up know. my son. I know. Other people can, might use an Uber or call for a ride. Why are you riding in a car where you're telling me that it's... See, people want it one way. If they want their cake and they want to eat it too. You're telling me how horrible the car was and then you're telling me you continue to drive for half an hour on it. Yes. Well, that's really not only dumb and dangerous, but you damage a car that way. Because he didn't contact you 200 yards away, did he? He did not. I need you to get to the part where you tell them about the wheel part. What do they do about it? They, I bring it back the second time. They put it on the lift. They said, the pins are frozen. It hasn't been driven in months. I go, that's incredible. How, how could that be? He test drives the car, Mr. Anderson, and he tells me, this car is unsafe to drive. I go, well, you just passed it for a New York State inspection hours ago. Oh, we never worked on the wheels and stuff. I go, how can you not work on the wheels if you passed it for a New York State inspection? That's impossible. Well, the best I could do for you is making this car right again is with no, I'll give you two rotors for $120, no cost on anything else. I go, why should I pay for a car that was working? That, that particular thing, the wheels were turning, it was correct, and I need a wheel alignment and everything else. How, what happened under your care that it wasn't working? Uh, you know, you got How do rotors, rotors get damaged? Were the rotors damaged? The rotors were warped, which is an unforeseen, you can't see warped rotors. You can't visually see that. Did you pass it for New York State inspection we and did. then after that say it's unsafe to drive? We did not. We did not. We did not say it was unsafe to drive. We never stated that the car was unsafe to drive. Okay, we, but how do you pass it let, for, for New York State inspection when there's this problem be, with the rotors? Because the pulsation, all right, first off, New York State inspection, warp rotors are not part of the New York State inspection, just okay. so we understand that. Warp rotors are not. Pads have to be metal to metal. We never stated that the car was unsafe. He failed to talk about the part that he came back after repairing the AC at 5.15 at night. We put the car back on the lift at that point that we found out about this pulsation is what we call it in the industry. We put the car up on the lift to investigate the pulsation. So now we find, which is a very common occurrence in disc brakes, that the caliper pins that hold the caliper to the slide bracket, we find that the caliper slide pins are frozen solid. They are not moving. Very common, they seize. Did you do any work on these brakes before you gave this car to him? I did not. Brakes had nothing to do with the stuff With the that... repairs I did, I did not. Okay, so are, is it your contention that they did do brake work? The brakes... No, they, they, okay. they had so you're, Wait axle. a minute, so you paid him $1,600 to do work, he did the $1,600 worth of work, but your car needs more work so you feel he should pay for it? Well, the, it's the damage that was done. The air conditioning so, was okay, not So, okay, so your position... Wait, we'll get to the it's, air conditioning minute. So your position on the brake issue is that they broke the brakes. They broke the rotors, the brakes... How did they the, do that are, when they're not even working there? I, I, I have no idea. They, you they, said, they, well, he, my other guy says they must have hit a curb. You're the guy taking the car back and forth over and over again, but let no, me... No, over, show me that in writing. Do you have something from your other yes. guy that says somebody this must have hit a curb? No, they, you know, they don't have that. This is just what they, they sp I spent on that. Yeah, that's not... Yeah, okay. So yeah. now... You offer then to him, if you pay me just the cost of? The rotors. We free up the caliper pins at no charge because that in itself could cause a brake pulsation. This is all happening at closing time. Car still has a brake pulsation. Come back in the office, talk to Mr. Visco about the brakes. He's upset. He's upset that the car needs more work. He states, oh, I spent already too much money on this car. My ex-wife's not gonna spend any more money on this car. I'm buying this for my daughter. Okay, so out of the interest of customer satisfaction, I say to Mr. Visco that I will repair the brake pulsation for the cost of parts. Which was how much? Which was $120 is what I had told him originally. So you tell him that for 120 and so that, that means that you're giving him the labor cost of how much? <sighs> uh, uh, roughly. Over $200. Okay, what happened? So now he agrees to bring the car back the next morning okay. to have it repaired. Okay. And what happens? Does he bring it in? He calls me up the next morning, says, I'm not going to bring it back into you. You give me $500, and this is a quote, you know, I have a lot of connections. I'm a retired detective sergeant in the police department. I have a lot of connections, and you credit me back $500, or I'm going to make your life miserable. So when you buy a car that's 13 years old that has problems that has 113,000 miles, Absolutely not. They're older than these two, and it's not made to last. Right. And, you're you and you're already given her problems, I bet. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what do you say? No. 
I have a car with 30,000 miles and it gives me enough problems. <laughs> and you? No, I wouldn't. If I'm going to buy a car that old, I'm going to make sure it's a reliable make model. What if it were, what, what if it were a great deal? No, because I'm buying it because I'm assuming it's been well taken care of and it's going to last me for what I need it for. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. Are you a retired detective sergeant? Yes, I am. Okay. How would he know that unless you were flaunting that around and trying to pull some muscle in there with your prior job? I wasn't. I was talking about the New York State inspection. What type of company okay. would let a car leave their service? And this man did. Mr. Anderson did test drive the car. Okay. He did, no quote, I need you to listen to me. Was you agree that he told you that for the price of, that you could just bring it back in and that, you know, he'll eat the labor and you just pay the parts. And why didn't you bring it back in? It was 30 miles away and they already broke the car to begin with. It wasn't working. What evidence do you have he broke the car? I don't have it. I, but that's I'm right. But that's what place. you need when you come to court and say he broke the car. Okay. The next thing I want is you're suing for 635.73 Mavis Tire. What is that about? That's to do the repairs that were damaged in regards to his company. That you could have gotten taken care of for 100 or 120? No, they had to do four. They said they needed four. They, they said they needed a wheel alignment. They see they didn't do some of the um, the windshield wipers had to be re re replaced. Windshield that wipers has nothing to do with right. the, the but I'm rotors. just saying there was things that I, I wanted to have. Okay, well, those are the things you wanted to have, but is no, that no, something you paid had, him for? I paid him extra to have the differential fluid. Wait, uh, hold on. Show me filter. now what he was supposed to have done that he didn't. This is I, a I, I need you to listen. Okay. Show me what you hired him, paid him to do that he did wrong that you had to have redone. Here's the items. It's the. Uh, Maybe it's discount tire. No, no. It's Was that something you paid him for? Right. I, I paid him to do the repairs. No, no. Don't keep saying do the repairs. What you had done at Mavis Tire, right. is that something you hired and paid him to do, yes or no? The answer is no. We both know it's no. Because this is what you were supposed to bring the car back for. You chose not to have them do it because they're too far. It took too long. And it damaged the auto. That's fine. So you're suing for that. Because according to you, they damage the auto. And then I ask you, prove that, and you say, I feel it. Because you don't have anything from a mechanic saying they damaged the auto. That's the Mavis bill. Now show me what you have done at Jiffy Lube. I had a, a, an oil change and filter and differential. Why fluid. wouldn't they pay for your, for your oil change? Because they were supposed to do it, and I thought it was part uh, okay, of the stop, price. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Show me on his bill where he charged you for an oil change. They didn't then why should he have to pay for your oil change if you didn't get charged for an oil change? I, there was stuff that we agreed, that Court we spoke to his son. Court is about what you're out. Yes. It doesn't, first of all, watch this. Did he, did he hire you to do an oil change? No. Okay. okay, so, and is it on the bill? No. So you didn't pay for it. Why would you come into court and sue him for an oil change that you never got billed for and never did and apparently took the car without having done? Okay, AC compressor parts and labor estimate $1,200. Let's talk about that. Do you have any proof that the AC that they fixed isn't working? It's not working now. Forgive me, but I don't trust you. Okay. So do you have any proof that it's not working besides your testimony? No. Okay. Now, if I do an AC job at your place, can I, is there a warranty involved? Of course there is. And how long is the warranty for? Again, the warranty is for two years or 24,000 miles. Excellent. So uh, then you have an AC warranty. You know not to take it to him because, A, you don't get along, mm -hmm. and B, um, he's part of a national franchise. So you could go to that franchise in your town and, and get it repaired there. You're under warranty. Why would I make them pay you $1,200 if you don't even take it to them to take advantage of your warranty? If I may. Yeah. Which we never did a compressor. Mm -hmm. So again... Oh, why are you making him pay or asking me to make him pay for a compressor when that wasn't part of the job you had them do? I don't know what they damaged when they were rushing to get their stuff done. It was Neither to to do it. I. And right. your job, when you come to court and ask somebody to fork over $2,500 and ask me to order them to do it, your job is to convince me they broke it. I don't know what they broke. Well, neither do I. You know what? We're done. Okay. That's enough of everybody's time wasted. My verdict in this case is for the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Mr. Vesco, the retired detective, loses his case here in court. You know, you pointed out you have testified in court before. You've been in court before, obviously, right? Yes, that's correct. Viewers would think you'd be prepared and have more evidence with you to convince the judge you were right. but Sometimes it doesn't work it. out that way. I thought I was prepared enough in regards to this, uh, especially with uh, 
Well, the loads of evidence, but she only took what she wanted. The judge would disagree with you. Sorry about did. that. In court, it's not a good day for you. Sorry, sir. Sometimes okay. Happens. Thank you. You must sign a few documents on your way. Mr. Anderson, Thank you. I felt sorry for you. You made a, you made a very good presentation, though. Thank you. Were, you you Thank were a good you. defendant. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you feel better? I feel better. Okay. Uh, well, congratulations. Thank you All very right. much. You're very welcome. You. Good luck Thank now. You. Harvey, what do you think? Okay, Doug, uh, there's something called the Bureau of Automotive Repairs in some states, and it's a state agency that licenses repair shops, and a lot of times they can solve disputes between customers and the shop. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.